Hello everybody, this is Gregory with the Cinema Rank. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to do a compare and contrast of two longtime friends, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and look at their different marriages. And probably agree that Matt Damon's doing it better and chose better. Now before we begin, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so these episodes can fresh to you and post a comment. Now, when May and I, my erstwhile co-host, we used to have a series called Actor vs. Actor, Who Would You Rather Be? And we probably did 15 of these in podcast form in, in the year of our Lord, 2023. And one of the ones we did, the first one we did actually, I think was Matt Damon versus Ben Affleck because they've always been connected. They were childhood friends. Of course, they broke big with Goodwill Hunting and they came back into The Last Duel. They've created a production company together and so much more. So. I think they have vastly different lives, right? Vastly different. And if you've ever seen them interviewed, I remember seeing a lot of interviews of them for Last Duel, the Ridley Scott Renaissance movie they did. And Affleck is louder, more over the top. They're both articulate, they're just very different. Affleck is more in your face, talk, 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 talk. You can tell he's very bright, but kind of frenetic. Damon talks slower and maybe is more of a wallflower and maybe his insight isn't as 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 keen as affleck is but affleck reminds me of like you know what they say about iq and and, and genders women tend to be at the middle of the bell curve and men tend to, to to undulate on other sides so you have more high iq men but also more low iq men and affleck just reminds me of kind of like the pendulum maybe that, that's not a good example with the iq but he swings really bright and then god he could be so stupid Either way, so the reason I, I want to do an episode on this is that Damon has always been very private with his family and with his wife, Luciana, who we'll talk about uh, in a second. And they uh, came out for the, the premiere of his new movie, and he actually brought all four of his children. One is a steppy. We'll talk about that in a second. He has three biological kids with Luciana. And uh, normally he doesn't roll out the kids, and they're all girls. And so I thought, well, this is a good time to talk about Damon's relationship. So if you didn't know, Damon dated Minnie Driver during Good Will Hunting and famously dumped her on Oprah and told Oprah that he was single <laughs> before even telling Minnie Driver that he had dumped her. He dumped her such on Oprah. And uh, he dated some other, you know, relatively well-known celebrities. And then he met Luciana in 2003. So at the time, he would have been 32 and she would have been 28. And he's well known at this point. He's already done a Legend of Bagger Vance. He's filming Stuck on You, the Fairly Brother movie that he does when he's the identical twin. It's a fine movie. You know, it's fine. It's the one with Greg Kinnear, who is an emperor has no clothes. We have an episode on him. Kinnear is essentially the same in every movie. So she's working at a bartend, uh, as a bartender. And the story goes as they tell is that she helped him hide from people that were chasing him. And he actually hid behind the bartending. Uh, the the bar area and maybe she caught his eye now at the time Luciana had already been married and divorced she is uh, de Argentina but uh, she was living not in Argentina where they met I believe this was in Paris if I'm not mistaken and look what can you say about Luciana Luciana I don't think is like historically beautiful she definitely has that Italian look a lot of Italians live in Argentina uh, no jokes about fascists but they were actually moving there along with the Germans no jokes about hidden Nazis in Argentina at the turn of the century similar to our Ellis Island time a lot of uh, Europeans moved to Argentina and that's why Argentines kind of have this reputation as being the snobs of Latin America because they'll, they, they won't say it but they'll, they'll say like they have no Indian blood because they essentially didn't have a lot of native people that lived in present-day Argentina and, and the few that they did they killed them all as opposed to if you go to like Bolivia and, and Peru and Guatemala, Mexico, there's tons of indigenous people. And so they look down at those because essentially Argentina is, is, is Europe far away, Europe, Southern Hemisphere. Even Buenos Aires is the Paris of, of the South or whatever they call it, the, the Paris of the Western Hemisphere. Either way, so they started to date and uh, he, whoops, baby Ray beater. In other words, so if you look at the timeline of when they got uh, engaged, they, they, got, they proposed, he proposed, and, or he, he announced that he was gonna get married to her, and then three months later, he actually did marry. And this is in, uh, in, in 2005, in the fall of 2005. So you look at the timeline, their child was born in, their first child, I should say, was born in, in July of 2006. So they got married in December of 2005, or it could be the year after, but 
if you look at the timeline, they would have known that she had been impregnated by Matt Damon by the time they decided to go to the JP and get married. So now, is it because Luciana is just so cravenly like needing the seed of the Jason Bourne that she just lost control and who knows what kind of birth control they were using or whatever? Or was it a, you know, I am a bartender and somehow I got a world famous actor to like me and was it a whoops? Was it a whoops pregnancy? Because that way she could latch him in. And it was successful. You know, we, we won't know, only they know, but it was successful because if you look 20 years later uh, from when they started to date, they're still together. And th the thing about Damon and her is, and again, this could be orchestrated, but they, they are known to be pretty affectionate. There's two things I like about them, and these are always good signs of a married couple. One, they're affectionate with each other. Uh, so they're, they're, they, they hold hands, they tap each other on the ass, all these things. And at this point, she's 48, he's 53. And, you know, for her age, she still looks good. She's maintained her figure after having four children. And, of course, you know, I mean, she ain't stupid and she's rich because of Damon. She didn't, like, inherit this while she just married the right guy and dicknapped him, so to speak. But she ain't stupid. She knows she's got to stay in shape because uh, men are men and she, he'll go to somebody younger and fitter if she loses her figure. But I think Luciana... They have good PDA, and the other thing is they, they stay out of the limelight. They, they've always historically, Damon has stayed out of the limelight. He's not showing his kids to everybody like his friend Ben Affleck and certainly other celebrities. And they spend much of their time in other countries, uh, for example, Australia. He likes to go to Australia quite a bit, and he lives there much of the time with the Hemsworth brothers. And uh, that's smart. You know, we, we talked about that that long ago about... Um, Michael Fassbender and Alicia Vikander just announcing that they had their second kid some time ago and like nobody knew because they live a very quiet life. And so I, I, I like to juxtapose Damon and Affleck because they're always going to be linked until their dying days. And you look at Affleck always courting the paparazzi, going back, I mean, even before he was dating J-Lo the first time around, J-Lo 1.0 or Benifer 1.0. Before that, if you guys didn't know, he was dating Paltrow in the mid-90s and then later on, um, he was dating, um, who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting a, a big name. Uh, he was dating somebody else during that time, and then he got with, with J-Lo, and again, he was in videos, in J-Lo's videos, they were photographed everywhere, they were courting that, and then even with Jennifer Garner, it was the same thing, just courting, courting, courting the press, courting the paparazzi, and so you've seen him have ups and downs in a lot of his relationships, and I think it's just so different from Damon in that Damon was like, yeah, I'm going to marry this bartender. And they agreed, or maybe he was the one who decided we're going to lay low and just kind of have a quiet, relatively boring life as super rich celebrities. And so it's just refreshing to see that because the large majority of Hollywood celebrities don't live a quiet life. Like, but there are going to be differences, like also with Chris Hemsworth. He's been with Elsa Pataki, Spanish actress, uh, for some time. And, you know, he's not really courting... Uh, the, the paparazzi and courting, the, you know, calling, boop, 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 I'm going to be at Dunkin' Donuts at X amount of time, like <clears throat> Affleck allegedly does. So there are, other, there are other celebrities who do that. But I think with Damon, I think that's a good thing. Now, is this marriage going to last? You know, who knows? Who knows? I will say they've been together 20 years. The fact that they've laid, they stay out of the limelight, they have kids together. Damon seems like a pretty, like, well-grounded kid. I uh, look at Affleck. Affleck didn't have his father in his life. He had a bad relationship with his father, so it's not like he had the best in terms of male role model. I think he had a good relationship with his mom. And so maybe Damon just goes out of his way to make sure that he has a very quiet, out-of-the-limelight life. And he's been on record saying that he doesn't want to date celebrities after he was dating uh, some celebrities before he met Luciana. And look, with Luciana, it's another thing about Damon, because Damon could be dating more beautiful women. No offense to Luciana. But he's Matt Damon, and you know you could say what you want to say about him now, but he's a world-famous guy, beautiful, much younger uh, supermodels would be willing to date him, and he chose somebody uh, at his peak in the mid-noughts uh, to pick somebody who was a bartender who maybe wasn't the most beautiful, but he made... He made a choice to essentially marry a, a nobody. And we've talked about that in episode. What does it mean when a male actor marries a nobody, somebody that's not in the biz? And what does it mean when a female celebrity like ScarJo or somebody uh, marries a nobody that's outside of the biz? Or think of Julia Roberts, for example. And so I think it does reflect well on Matt Damon and his character that he essentially married a nobody and whatnot. Now, you could say from the Red Pill perspective, look, he became a stepdad. 
he, what, what a red flag. He marries a, a single mom who we don't know if she divorced the first husband or he had divorced her. But, you know, if, if somebody's already set the precedent that they can hold down a first marriage, what makes you think they can hold down the second one? You know, it's a fair question. And we know the statistics don't get offended women that the divorce rate of second marriages is around 70 percent. So you could you could argue maybe somebody argued in Damon's family. It's like, hey, you could get you know, at the time he's in 32, 33. You could get a 21 year old young girl who's never been married, why are you going to marry a divorcee uh, with a kid? Somewhat similar to, to uh, Joe Rogan, the comedian podcaster. He did the same thing. He married a single mom. But, you know, for whatever reason, he, he did that. And then, the, you know, the whoops pregnancy. And, and here we are today. But in general, kudos to you, Damon, for having a quiet life. I hope this marriage works out for the sake of your kids. It looks like, for all intents and purposes, it is a successful marriage. And they don't seem to be the type that are going to be heading to divorce. So I uh, wish him well. And maybe Affleck can learn from his, his buddy how to maintain a good relationship. Because we know the affleck JLo marriage is done. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. What's your take on Damon and his relationship with Luciana? Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.